Hello everybody, welcome to the Sunday live stream. So as you may have guessed, I'm in a brand new location. So before we get into this and start talking about where the crypto and digital asset market is going, where Bitcoin is going, and then just kind of how we can sort of direct ourselves, let's go over a little, do a little housekeeping first. First of all, the audio, because this is a brand new location, I need to make sure that the audio is pretty crisp and it's good and you can actually hear it. There's no background music. So if you would be so kind, just let me know in the comments section right now how the actual audio is. So as you can tell, uh, different location. We're going from uh, Texas back here in Puerto Rico, right by uh, Ocean Beach, as a matter of fact, very nice place. And uh, we have some renovations going on in another, another place. So right now, what we'll take a look at is, uh, of course, the audio itself. And I can see that nobody has a problem with the audio. I like that. And unfortunately, in this location, there is no pool. But what's great about it, there is a beach right down the street. So maybe one of these days, I'll just do a live stream from the beach itself. So let's go, let's just jump into it because it looks like nobody really has an issue with the audio. Let me know in the comment section later on. So before we can jump into this, which I thought was pretty interesting, this is Ben's website. We steal as much as we possibly can, as much as he'll allow. And we talk about things. And, and it's, a, it's an odd thing because what we're talking about today is the information or where we're going to be in potentially the next blow off top bull run. Now, this isn't something that we talk about all the time, but it is something we need to be aware of because at some point, maybe somebody wants to sell something. Maybe they don't want to sell at the absolute bottom. Maybe they want to think for themselves. There's, a, there's another option here. So I want to take a look at this. But before we get into that, I want to remind everybody that, that uh, this upcoming week is a very big week in the macro environment. This is from uh, Kobiesi Letter. Looks like there's an OPEC monthly report, which is on Tuesday. OPEC is essentially everything that has to do with, with oil production and distribution. And there is some rumblings uh, that is going on in Saudi Arabia, how they may not, they may actually stop denominating uh, barrels of oil in dollars. And if that happens, watch out. Also, May CPI inflation data is coming out on Wednesday. Fed interest rate decision is Wednesday. Here's a hot take. They're not going to raise interest rates, but... That's just uh, what 99% of people say. Who knows? You can go against the, against the grain. Fed press conference, same day. PPI inflation on Thursday. MI consumer sentiment data Friday. So if you're big into the macro space, you're going to love this week. There's a lot of things going on. And actually, it's funny because like this week is a pretty big week. Last uh, Friday, actually just two days ago, uh, we were talking about uh, Roaring Kitty and what's happened with his uh, live stream. And uh, we had talked about how you know it affected the markets. But... Uh, it really wasn't uh, Roaring Kitty so much as like the big haul. The big haul, of course, uh, was the jobs report. We talked about that. We didn't talk about it as we didn't talk about it at all in, in the video. And we should have, but uh, that, unfortunately, because the jobs report was so darn hot, and we put this out on on X itself, that uh, people are starting to lose their mind and saying, "Oh no, the jobs report is too high." The Fed is, is going to be higher for longer and we'll never get that rate cut that we so deserve and the quantitative easing will start. Look, if you know anything about the, the jobs reports or economic data, it's amazing how it gets revised months later when more data comes in. So if you think like that's the most accurate data you're going to get, I will just remind you that it is the government. And uh, as a reminder, do not trust them. But on these things, we look at this data Institutions look at this data, Wall Street looks at this data, and that's what they got to go by. And they're going to go by that, and they're going to get crazy, and they're like, whoa, we got to start selling. <laughs> that's essentially what happened. But as a reminder, in the long run, it doesn't matter. If you have a long-term horizon outlook like I do, and I think maybe you yourself watching this video, you have a long-term horizon, it's the same thing repeating over and over again. We don't go straight up, we don't go straight down. And if you just take a look at the, just the four-year cycles, everything after having, what happens? Usually we have a pretty good year after that. And people said that that was dead in March of 2020 because of the uh, Cervasa sickness virus that came out. And it was a massive year because of the quantitative easing and everything else that was behind the scenes. So as a reminder, you are right here after the halving. It's only been, what, a couple of months or so? So uh, if, you're, if you're panicking, just relax. You don't like the, the price, it's going to be okay. Things will change. Just stick around. I think you're going to like where we're going. So talking about macro, let's switch gears a little bit as to like a little PSA before we get into uh, 
where we're going. I, um, I have to keep harping on this because we can talk about this all day long about how high Bitcoin's gonna go, where we're gonna be, and just how great you know, crypto digital asset is. It means nothing, absolutely nothing, if you get scammed and you lose everything. It's not how much you make, it is how much you keep. There is a video in the description where I talk about all my huge mistakes. It's one of the top four that, that I have down there. One is when to take profits on the blue chips. The other one is when to take profits on kind of like the more degen meme coins. And the last one is the things of all my mistakes that I would have, that I wish I could go back and change. One of those is making sure that two-factor authentication is on and not that crappy uh, text messaging service and emails. I'm talking about the Google one. So this is from Lu, Lu, Wu Blockchain, excuse me, Willy Wu. According to Slow Mist to OKX, which is a centralized exchange account, were stolen this morning. Hackers created new API keys with trading and withdrawal permissions. None of the victims used Google Authenticator, but used short messaging service or text service or email verification. Let me say that one more time. None of the people that got hacked used Google Authenticator. They used text messages or email verification. Hijackers or hackers hijacked their mobile phone verification codes to withdraw coins and boom, they're already wiped out. So again, little public service announcement, doesn't matter how much you make, it's how much you keep, and that's the easiest way to lose everything. Congratulations for all your hard work, you lost everything. Switching gears again, <laughs> shorts. Let me get off my show box, I'm sorry. Shorts, uh, there is a massive amount of shorts coming in, and it is concerning, but I'm gonna tell you why. You can look at it a couple different ways, like how all markets, we always look at these things in, in different perspectives. So this is the CFTC CME Bitcoin leverage funds net total combined new record shorts. Look at that. Now I remember I was in crypto in, in 2017 and I remember back in uh, December, sometime around end of November, early December, they started to talk about how CME or Bitcoin is gonna be listed. And we thought it was the best thing of all time. We're like, oh, that's great, institutions are here. And what they do, they shorted the living tar out of us and uh, they made a fortune by shorting Bitcoin. They did a great job. Actually, I remember the uh, Winklevi or the Winklevoss twins said, the, said this to everybody institution said, hey, if you think Bitcoin doesn't have a long-term horizon, then why don't you try shorted it? And guess what they did? They did it and they <laughs> made a killing. So right now we have a new record short. And you can just see that in 2024, down here a little bit, where this little bar starts, that's January, February, March, April, May, June, going into July. Uh, that's the most there's ever been. So what does that mean? That means there's a lot of people who believe that Bitcoin isn't gonna go where we think it's gonna go. And that's fine. That's what makes the world go around. That's what makes investing great, in my personal opinion. People have difference of opinions. But I wanna remind you of a couple of things. First of all, Adam Back had a, had a pretty good point. Take this with a grain of salt because Adam's a permeable, we'll say. He said, look, it doesn't matter for all these shorts because each short has a long buyer. A user buying CME long to buy now pay later. Hedge fund shorts are covered by Bitcoin ETF buys. That's a good point, actually. Bitcoin ETF buys. Look at that. They're just collecting the basis trade premium, a USD based strategy. They're helping keep premium down for margin buyers. And then there is that part, but then there's another bigger part, which is this. Nobody seemed to have given the memo to BlackRock because today is the ninth, June 9th, 2024. Uh, June 7th, IBIT or BlackRock, they had almost 2,500 Bitcoin inflow. That's not, now of course, Grayscale, of course, has their outflow because Grayscale is Grayscale, but it's like no one told BlackRock, hey, we're gonna short. They're like, whatever. Uh, we're going to keep uh, telling our clients to buy, and now here we are. So it depends on where you want to go. If you want to short it, I say have at it. Have a good time. We'll see what actually happens. But I think you might be on the wrong side of history in the long run. Saylor, Michael Saylor put this out. It was a pretty well, well said. 34-spot Bitcoin ETFs hold 1,031,973 Bitcoin. And actually, Crypto T said it perfectly. She said they bought 5% of the entire supply in six months. Holy smokes. As a reminder, IBIT and BlackRock, it is the fastest ETF to reach $20 billion in a very short amount of time. It is the most successful ETF there's ever been. So if there's gonna be people who are shorting out there, let them short, let them have their fun. And uh, if it goes down, you say, great, you know what? Uh, congratulations to all your short sellers. 
you just gave me another opportunity. And if it goes up, you're like, well, told you so. And thankfully, I had this nice little bag. It's all up to you, which would lead me to our last point, which is why we're all here, strategies. Now, this piece is from Ben's website, Exit Strategies into the Cryptoverse. There's a link in the description. Some parts are paid and some parts are free. Like the DCA tool is 100% free. It's great. Use it all the time. I talk about it all the time. But for this one, it's about exit strategies. And what I liked about this exit strategy is you see right here where it, has, it says risk bands. This is what I actually molded a lot of my exit strategy for this round around, which was risk bands. And when it comes down to here is 1.0, it's 152,842. What is that? Well, essentially what that is, depending on the time of what Bitcoin is actually in, obviously, if you're at a, a zero level, that's there's no risk essentially. And over time, of course, it actually increases. But the zero risk level is $15,000 for Bitcoin. Now, this is not financial advice. I'm not telling you that this, it can never go below 15,000. I personally don't think it could, but I've been wrong before. But what it takes a look at is just time. Right now we're at 0.61. If we take a look here, we're actually in this little band right here. So if you're kind of questioning, like, I don't understand this time and risk bands and, and how to use DCA and all that stuff, there's a website. I don't know if you've heard of it. It's called Dan Teaches Crypto. It's 100% free, it'll always be free. And when you log in, and I, all I ask for you is an email. And you don't, I don't even spam you, I just tell you when I actually uh, upload a new video. But if you go to module three, investing, scroll down, it talks all about dynamic DCAing and time and wristbands and it kind of lays it all out for you. And then, you know, there's also Ben's website right there that you can check out as well. And then also uh, one more thing to add uh, about this is that uh, we just did a partnership, uh, us and Coin Bureau, and uh, in module four reviews, we did a couple of their uh, paywall videos and we put them into our free section. This is the one about ton. Then here's some intros from Pith, Metis, Akash, and GameSwift from Guy. And then we do some reviews like eh, little projects like World Mobile and other stuff down there. So check that out and go from there. And then also before we get into it, just as a reminder, Ben's website, it's not just crypto. It also has macro. So all the things that, that people talk about in the, in the macro space and they say like how great this is and whatever else, you can go there and you can double check and verify. You can put in your own strategy. But look at this. I, I like this one, job openings. Actually, for the last data point, it's going pretty low. Uh, job quits level, essentially, uh, to find as an employee who left their job voluntarily has actually gone down. Maybe people a little bit, it's gone up a little bit as far as April. Job quits rate is percentage wise, it's kind of flattened out. Initial claims, when people are getting file unemployment, uh, you can just see right here that as far as initial claims goes, it's actually done a little increase in June. That's something to note. So again, I like this website because it gives you a whole picture. Anyhow, going back here, 152,000. This is where you can go as far as your strategy. If you believe that Bitcoin could hit that or more, I'm not a big person to, to give uh, price predictions, but what I like about the exit strategy at some point, maybe you wanna take a look at this, is it lays it all out like this. You can do it by, by numbers. You can do it by, let's see, where is it, where is it? Ah, percentages. So when it hits these risk bands, and you can depend, and you can just decide like where you wanna go. Like me personally, I'm pretty much gonna be the YOLO this time, which is I'm only gonna, well, we'll see. I might do the HODL. Yeah, I should probably do the HODLer. The hodler is a little bit safer. And of course, it gets safer as you go down this risk level, but we're already at 0 0.6, so you know, what do you want to do? But if you're the holder, let's just say you're a holder, right? The risk band. So you want to sell, when it hits 0 0.8, you sell a third. When it hits, hits 0 0.9, you hit sell a third. When it hits 1.0, you sell a third. And what's cool about this one is that selling at the risk bands, you can sell like at the beginning. And let's... Let's put this in numbers. This might be a little easier. If I was gonna sell at the beginning of the wristband for like the hodler, we use current.
it would be a little bit middle top. Now, there we go. So you'd be at constant, hold on, linear. Ah, linear. So what you would do, <laughs> it would be right here on this side. Jesus, I'm Christmas. Let's just do constant. So if you were in this range, the 0 0.8 to 0 0.9, you would start to sell when it hits 105. And then that'd be like a third. And then when it hit 0 0.9, it'd be 127. Let's go for, how about the beginning? Because there's a difference between 0 0.8 and 0 0.899. Same thing. Use projected. Huh. Yeah. Shoot. I'm trying to get the right uh, numbers up here. Let me do this again. ETH. Bitcoin. Projected peak price? Oh, that's why. The current price, 69,000. Geez, don't use a projected price of $6,000. Let's just put it on uh, use current. All right. So let's say here. So YOLO, you would sell everything at around 0.8, or start to sell at roughly 85,000. Zero point, yeah, seven to 0 0.8. And then the next piece, which would be the holder, is when maybe when it starts to run 105, you start to sell, and then 127,000. And that's, of course, getting up to one. But the absolute peak value that it could be is 152,000, which is, I don't know if it's gonna be there, but who knows. I will say this, though. For me, I'm not here to sell 100% of my Bitcoin, and I'm not even sure I'm gonna sell even 50. But I have to take profits, because I didn't do a good job last time. Let's take Ethereum. Let's do this. And again, it doesn't matter what I do. It's whatever you think to yourself you should do because I can't tell you what to do. Not financial advice. I can only tell you what I'm doing and the tools that I'm, that I'm using to get there. All right, all right, all right. So for this one, Ethereum. And then also in the comment section, if you wanna see anything else, I can do one more. I can do ADA, DOT, AVAX, Link, Solana, Matic, BNB, VET, Algo, Maker, XRP, Adam, Tezos, Ave, Litecoin, Monero, and Stellar. Whichever one you want to see, put that in the comment section. We'll go from there. So anyhow, Ethereum. Use projected. No, no, no. Use current. So for this one, and right now, where are we? So the risk level currently for Ethereum is actually pretty high. 0 0.68, around 3,696, all right? So 0 0.68, which would be at the top, between the middle and the top band, 33 to 3891. So if we're gonna think to ourselves, all right, I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna be one of these, let's just go for aggressive. So we'll start at 0 point, no, we can't because it's already past that. Hold there again, no, no, no. Let's do YOLO, because it takes 0 0.8 and 0 0.9 to one. So if that's the case, 0 0.8 to 0 0.9, if you're going from the low end, you would start selling around 5,300. And then if you wanted to, as time went on, you say, okay, once it hit 0 0.9, you take a little bit of profits, maybe 33%, maybe 25%, a 7,400. And then maybe when it hits that 1.0, if it ever does, you still take some more profits. But again, it's all what you want to do and where you want to go from. What's great about this tool is that you can tailor it to however you want it to be. It does use the time and risk bands, which personally I like myself. If you're looking for that video, there's a link in the description where I talk about when I'm going to sell and when I'm going to sell blue chips versus all the meme coins and DGen stuff that I've accumulated throughout the years, which I really never should have had. But here we are. And of course, you can do whatever you want with it. Wristbands, top, middle, beginning, constant.
linear and exponential. So there's one more to go. <laughs> Aristotle Plato, where were you when I was asking about the, uh, the audio? Ah, let's just do this, Aristotle or Plato. So let's take audio and let's reduce the make background noise. Now can you all hear it? Okay, can you all hear it right now? And then it looks like Solana is winning for the next one to take a look at. Oof, Solana, Solana, Solana. Sounds fine, perfect. Who do do to do? Hunter, can you still hear that sound? Because I'm going to guess that some people have great speakers on the computer. Some people don't have great speakers on their computer. Some people don't hear that well. Some people have earphones. Some people do not. So I have to kind of tailor it as best I can to everybody. So let's see. It's good, great, perfect, yes, yes, can't hear anything, great. Wish you, <laughs> that's okay. We're gonna be here for the month, so now I know the settings, I appreciate it. All right. Oh, I can when you speak. I have amazing headphones. Nick says, Doge, sorry, Nick, that wasn't the option. That is not in the uh, on the site itself. Solana, Solana, Solana. Phone here, background gone. Man, this thing picks up everything. You know what that sound is? That's just the very light split level air conditioner. That's like across the room. I can't believe it hit. It can pick that up. Hold on. Okay, now we're going to figure out if it's the air conditioner or if it's the microphone. So now when I talk, can you hear anything? Let's see. Voice is way better when you're not speaking. No noise now. Sound is perfect. <laughs> All right, so let's see. The votes. Looks like I fixed the audio thing. Great, that didn't take too long. Everybody wants Solana for some reason. All right, let's take a look at Solana. So, Solana. And again, time and wristbands doesn't mean it's gonna hit this. Doesn't mean that it's gonna stop there. It just as time has gone on, the data points that have come in have said that as far as the wristbands themselves, here's what we got. So actually, first of all, before I tell you how much the last one is let's go to and again you can find all these on ben's site if you're into cardano dot avalanche Chainlink, polygon you can find all these time and wristbands there but i can't show you everything because then i couldn't then i probably get banned from using this website all right so let's see solana right now we're at wow i didn't know we we're that high 0 0.70 So, let's see. We're here, which I got to tell you is the second highest amount of days that Solana has already been in this wristband. The next one has been in this super low one, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 33 days. It's been in 0 0.7, 0 0.8 for 253 days, which I'm sure it's been bouncing around. 0 0.8, 0 0.9, 167. And this one has only been 38 days. So once it gets here, you probably want to start to think about if you haven't sold some, maybe you want to take a little bit of profits off the table. Just saying, but you don't have to. So here's what it states for 1.0. That would give us a price projection of 610 at this wristband level. All right. So again, what do you want to do? You want to be conservative? <laughs> 0 0.4 of a dollar. Uh, use projected, use current. 
160. Let's do the tops. And if we went this one, I gotta talk to Ben. All these numbers are 100% correct. This one over here though. So we're at 0 0.7 to 0 0.8. The price is between at the very, and again, we're at uh, 0 0.70. So I think we're at 160, 158, somewhere around there. Once it starts to hit these levels and 0 0.8 level, $238. Maybe you think to yourself, okay, I'll take 10%. I'll take 5%. I'll take 50% or whatever it is. If you want to get to 0 0.85 and wait till it hits 300, sure, you can do that. Or if you want to go to the very top, 0 0.89, 381. Again, it just depends on where you want to go. For me personally, I like the uh, YOLO one where it's 0 0.8 to 0 0.9 and 0.9 to 1. And I wait till this last part. Something to think about. But that's where we have Solana 610. Things could change. And that's it for today. All right, everybody. So that's it for this piece. And that will conclude it. Now we'll do a little Q&A if you want to ask me any questions. So I'll answer all those to the best of my abilities and we go from there. If you got to take off, take off. Thanks for so much for stopping by on a Sunday.